personal growth is like a journey of self-improvement and self-discovery. It's about becoming a better version of yourself day by day. You see, it's important for a bunch of reasons, just like how tending a garden helps it bloom and thrive. First off, personal growth means that you're not settling. It's about challenging yourself to reach your full potential. Think about it. Who wants to be stuck in the same place forever? By growing personally, you're making strides towards a more fulfilling and successful life. And you know what else? It's about gaining valuable life lessons and self-awareness. When you grow, you become more equipped to handle challenges and make better choices. It's like having a handy toolkit for life's ups and downs. Personal growth also has this cool ripple effect. And when you become a better version of yourself, your relationships improve, your career gets a boost, and you feel happier. It's like a win-win-win. So let's get started in this video about personal growth. Have you ever really taken the time to really understand yourself? Self-awareness is like a mirror that reflects your strengths, weaknesses, and everything in between. It's the starting point for personal growth. It's the first step in making a change or difference because you have to be aware that something needs improvement. You can practice self-awareness by taking quizzes, talking with others, and in general, being curious about who you are, what you like, and even how you think. Once we bring self-awareness in, that's when you can start goal setting. And setting goals is like plotting your course in life. It gives you the direction and purpose. So let's talk about how meaningful goals can turn your dreams into a plan. Have you heard of SMART goals? I mean, I feel like I teach about it constantly, but when creating goals, there's an even better approach that I like to take. And it has, uh, let's see, seven steps. So let's start with step one. Step one, as yourself, ask yourself, what is a new habit that aligns with the goal that you want to do? It makes sense that the goal is more tangible. Step two, how long will it take? Step three, what is something that you already do that you can attach it to before or after that particular habit? Step four, what is a shortened version so that you can still get a win? Step five, what obstacles might you encounter? Step six, who can help you stay on track and keep you accountable? Step seven, how will you reward yourself for the accomplishment? And step eight, I think I'd said seven steps, but it's eight steps. And how will reaching this goal help you become who you are meant to be? And that's goals in a nutshell. Feeling like there aren't enough hours in the day? Effective time management can help you regain control and make time for what matters most in your personal growth journey. I also already have a video on time management that you can watch um, on my YouTube channel. And the thing that I like most about time management is using time blocking. So making sure that you're setting specific times for specific things and tasks that you want to accomplish in the day. And that includes your personal growth. Ever struggle with sticking to a new habit or routine? Self-discipline is the key to consistency. So when you have self-discipline, that means you're staying motivated to do the things that you want to do, even if you don't like feel like doing it, you say, one, two, three, let's get it done. And the more you practice the self-discipline, the easier that habit and routine will get. Your emotional intelligence is just as important as your IQ. It affects our relationships, decision-making, and overall well-being. So understanding your emotions, being able to have that self-awareness and understanding of, okay, I actually feel overwhelmed or I'm feeling frustrated or I'm feeling sad. And then acknowledging what that feeling is, that is part of emotional intelligence and then deciding what to do when you feel that certain way. Communication is the lifeblood of relationships and personal growth. And the thing that I like to think about when I'm communicating with someone is to be open to what they have to say, to assume the best about the person, that they, their, what their intentions are, and also having a set of curiosity about what they're saying. Even if I have background knowledge about this or that, trying to stay open-minded about this particular moment and how that affects my own personal communication and not putting the past of what's happened previously into what's happening now in the present moment, acknowledging what their intention is and moving forward with that communication. 
Stress is a constant in our lives, but it doesn't have to overwhelm you. So the best way to learn how to manage your stress and find peace in life challenges is to focus on your self-care. And I'm not talking about going and having a girl's spa day or going to get your nails done. Yes, sometimes that is nice to do, but also that takes a lot of money and expense and time. You need to be practicing self-care to things every single day, even if they're five minutes, 10 minutes, anytime that you're struggling, getting into a habit and routine of having some self-care that you utilize is so very important for the stress that we have in our everyday life. Your health is the most valuable asset from nutrition to exercise to mental well-being. When you are practicing self-care, you're practicing it in your physical self-care, in your mental self-care, and your emotional self-care. And when you combine all of that, your personal growth will skyrocket. Money plays a big role in our lives, and financial literacy is the key to securing your future and having the freedom to pursue your personal growth and your goals. My last YouTube video from the week before was on financial information. If you would like to go, check it out. Wisdom isn't just about having a bunch of knowledge or being super smart. It's more like that deep, inner understanding that comes from experience and reflection. You know, the kind of insight your grandma might have about life. So what I think of wisdom is something that, yes, you have this knowledge and understanding, but wisdom is also about the application of that knowledge and understanding. Are you utilizing what you know with what your actions are in that moment? Do you ever wonder why we're always so curious about, well, everything? Curiosity is that insatiable hunger for knowledge, the spark that ignites our desires to explore and learn. It's what makes us ask those questions, why and how, and questions about the world around us. So when we are curious, we can learn more about our environment, how to interact with it, and what is the best way that we can grow as a person by being more curious about the world around us. Courage is like that superpower that helps us face our fears and tackle challenges head on. It's the absence of fear, but it's not the absence of fear, but it's the determination to push through it. You know, it's that what empowers people to stand up for what they believe in and take that leap into the unknown. So what is something that you need to bring more courage into? What are some things that you might be afraid of that you're like, no, that's not me. I'm not going to do that. They may not be a part of my personality, but you know the expectations are of yourself and what possibly you need to do to grow is to have courage to push into that fear and be determined even when you're scared to do so. Hope is like a beacon of light on a dark night. It's that feeling that things can get better, no matter how tough life may be. Hope inspires us, fuels us, our dreams, and keeps us moving forward, even when the path is uncertain. So what? where do you need to find hope in your life? What might you be struggling with that you need to bring a little light and say, you know what? Given time, given the circumstance, everything in life is changing constantly. I have hope and I have a sense of a brighter future or something else that's going to happen that's going to lead me into a better path. And that is really about personal growth. And hope gives you that. Gratitude is like a warm hug for the soul, a simple yet powerful emotion that can change our outlook on life. It's about appreciating the good things, big or small, and finding the joy in the everyday moments. So the best way that I could say that you can practice gratitude is through a gratitude journal, or even just acknowledging before like right when you wake up or right before you go to bed, something that you appreciate that you're looking forward to in that day or that has happened that day that um, has made you so thankful for being able to be alive or to share with others or to be with others. So what are you grateful for? 
love. Ah, uh, what a beautiful and complex thing it is. It's the glue that binds us together and the force that drives us to care deeply for others. Love comes in all shapes and sizes from the love we have for our family and friends to the deep affection we hold for our partners or even the world around us. And what are some ways that you like to show love? Have you heard of the um, love languages? I think that those are a really good key in defining about actual steps that you can take to be more intentional about showing love in the world.